This out. Little spot for my release. Confessional time. Uh, I wish I were to come to you with better news. I think you know if you've watched this channel for a little bit, we always try to keep it real, be very transparent. I do like movie magic, I like editing, but I don't like editing things that are about being real. I don't, changing storylines, stuff like that. So here's the deal, here's what I did. You can roast me in the comments if you want. I dry fired my bow at the top pin challenge. You don't have an arrow in. <laughs> Was filming with Tyler before Dan and Jay got there. I shot an arrow and there was no arrow. Tyler was looking through the camera. I was just looking at the target, did what I did. Today, we're gonna go find MFJJ and we're gonna kind of like break down if you do dry fire your bow, uh, if you pull a me, what do you do from there? I just saw him over here working. We're gonna go find him. We're gonna go grab my bow. We're gonna, fingers crossed, nothing went wrong, but we'll just let him tell you what to do from here. Oh, is that second cousins or third cousins? Where's that line at, right? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't put that in there. <laughs> ah, genius. No way. Dude. Yeah. I, do, up to me I dry fired my bow, yeah. yeah. Do people do that? Uh, a couple times a week I get one. Is it more or less common than we think it is? It's a lot more common than you think it is. I mean, at, least tell, at least tell me that like score was zero, right? I made a really good shot on it too, the one I drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 14 for like, sure. Was right on the target for sure. Someone told you? Tyler said it as I was going off, but Tyler was filming me through the long lens. So he was like looking through the lens and I was shooting no arrow and then he was Tim, you don't have a poof. So. Almost saved his ass, but not quite. Almost. No. So the moral of the story is don't be that guy. But secondly, we're going to show you a couple of things to look at to find out if you've done any damage. I don't know. No. Do I still have a chance to take down oh, Dan attack? Down okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I think, think so. Do. I authentically think so. I think Dan should be scared as shit. I really do. I think you should be a little nervous. How did you a medium nervous. nervous. Focused enough to not put an arrow in your bow. <laughs> all right, so first of all, if you dry fire your bow and damage it, take a step back so I can get up here. Most of the time, if you look down your cam, if you're looking straight down it this way, you'll see a, like a wobble, like it twists one given direction or it bends over a little bit in here. If you look at it from the side, you'll also see like a part of it cave in. Do we have that really bad one? Yeah, the guy who dry fired is uh, Revolt X and it's like caved in so we can give an example of what a bad one looks like. It's, yeah, I think we, we just got one like yesterday that the cams were like crushed. This is a great example of what a dry fired cam may look like. For those of you that don't know, this cam does not actually go this direction at all. I like, see how the string is like visible right there. This is an example of a really, really, really bad one. Do not pull this back if you've done this after that. It'll just come apart. That's dangerous. But what you're looking for is deviation. Actually, sorry, give me that back a second. Now, if you look down it too, it's not straight. See the curve in it? That's what you're looking for. Now, granted, it's not going to be this obvious. This is like rare. This is one of the worst ones we've ever seen. But you'll see that it's not a flat plane anymore. There's like a curve in it. If you're not sure, you look it over and everything looks okay. And you're like, I can't spot anything wrong. I can't spot anything wrong. And your bow is tuned before. Walk over to the paper tuner and put an arrow through paper and see if you still have a bullet hole. If you have a still, if you still have a bullet hole, there is no way you bent that cam because it won't shoot a bullet hole with a bent cam. And we're going to do that right now and see if Tim bent his cam. Nom nom. Oh, dun, dun. Okay, now you have to make a good shot too. <laughs> yeah, super important, Tim, is that you don't freak out when you shoot through paper. Yeah. You must remain calm and focused. So focused that you may not be aware that you forgot to put an arrow in your bow like before. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get the roasting all out of the way right now. Oh, you're gonna feel this for weeks, no, dude. There's just no roast way. me all right we're gonna, now. We're gonna talk about it <laughs> at TAC. You're gonna be at draw and go, oh, hey, Tim, you got an arrow there? <laughs> yeah. It'll totally screw with your head. <laughs> well, let's close that hole and you might have gotten lucky, young man. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you didn't bend anything, Tim. Shoot one more, make sure, but I'm pretty sure you got lucky, buddy. I needed that. Nothing like having confidence in your gear when it matters, <laughs> you know? Nothing yeah. would screw with your head more than feeling like you had something bent or broken on your bow come tournament day. Dan's probably used to shoot blanks. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> That's beauty. 
Just in case you couldn't hear that from the cheap seats, Forrest uh, said that <laughs> Tim's probably used to shooting blanks. So <laughs> that was a good Forrest. That was that was, you. Oh, he's got wit, man. He's, when silent, he's silent but deadly. When man. he sends them, they're. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's perfect right there. So no, we I wouldn't touch a damn thinking. thing. I think okay. you're fine. Yeah, I think you're golden. Nothing to worry about. Still lethal enough to take down Pop Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, so Honestly, it, it's looking at the shape of your cam or looking for a bend in your cam and then shooting it through paper. If you get a clean tear through paper, you didn't bend anything. I've never seen some a bent cam still shoot the same tear through paper. Even if it's just a little bit bent, you're not going to have the same tear through paper. So it's an easy catch. Now, if you weren't tuned before, now you don't have that to go off of. But if you had a clean tear, if it was a bad tear to get it to a shop now because you're not going to find everything that's wrong. Replace your cam. Not cheap. Very expensive, not warranty. Pulling back your bow without an arrow and letting it go is not a warranty issue, okay? That is a, I'm a dumbass issue and I wasn't paying attention. And don't go into your shop and say, I don't know what happened, it just it looks weird. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Blame it on your cousin, blame it on your uncle, but just tell us what you did or what they did. Don't care either way, but just be honest about it. And best of luck uh, getting it fixed as quick as possible. Now, one thing I will say for your, Matthew's over there, is almost every instance that we've had somebody do that, the first time they've actually covered it. I don't know anybody else does that. Something to consider when you're buying from a company that might give you a little bit of a leniency when you're being silly. So this is the arrow I'm kind of like been dialing in. I like it. Josh pointed me to these veins. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of questions about these in my posts too. This is a Flex Fletch SK2 or Silent Knight 2. It's a relatively stiff vein. It's not like infinitely stiff, but it's got a thinner base. It's a skinnier vein. It sticks with just about any kind of super glue with no prep. It is quiet. It's relatively silent going through and it's a consistent vein as all get out. The biggest reason why I like these is only weigh five grains a piece. And you know me and FOC, I'd rather have it up here than back here, because back here is a poor place to put it. That kind of twist and that kind of helical on there, that's going to give you some mega stability and they're still really good height. Very impressive vein. Love them to death. They are on the website. We do have every, we don't have every color they make, but I think we have like the six or seven most common ones and probably like a thousand of them. That's when I'm shooting. I haven't shot uh, all my broadheads yet, but I have sought, shot some and they've shot really good. So I'm pretty confident. This is probably what we're going to be recommending going forward just because it weighs so much less. It's a lot easier to maintain that good FOC in the front with less weight in the back. And I can tell you for sure that these have held up really well. Glued them on. I didn't prep my arrow. Getting really sick of building arrows. So I just glued them on to see if they would stick and uh, they've been awesome. There's that little bit of boning stuff that we dab on the end. Yeah, so typically we'd use a Fletch Type Platinum to, for your transition here and here. And the main reason that you use that is so there's not a lip edge left. So if you manage to catch something like a blade of grass or an edge of something, it doesn't rip the vein off. It gives it a smoother transition so it just bounces off. So let's talk about the front end of the arrow. This is the this gold is the tip. Gold tip. 600. 600 traditional stainless steel 72 grain inserts, about yay long in the arrow. Bomb proof, doesn't bend, 72 grains, then add whatever tip you want. This allows you to not use a collar. The main reason for using a collar is whatever is in here is not hard enough to stop a bend. If you put something in here that's hard enough to stop a bend, it won't bust through the side of the arrow when it hits something hard, and then you don't need to make your arrow longer, which lowers your FOC and makes it harder to make. Rumor bend. mill says that there might be some titanium in the Maybe. Uh, Shh. Don't we can't talk about it. Anyway, titanium is <laughs> supposed to be really durable, but also not cheap. Titanium is harder to bend. No, if Easton's four millimeter titanium adapter that they make, they claim you can't bend it. And that's a smaller diameter piece of material than this. So I would imagine if you made one of these out of titanium, it'd never bend no matter mm -hmm. what you did. So we dodged a bullet, bow's good. We got some four mil arrow stuff in the hopper. Dan's messing with that. You got anything left to do before you get ready for tack? I just put a new side on my bow, so I figure I probably ought to do that. And I might have a, a real surprise at the end, but I'm not even going to tell you, so you're not going to know Jack. Another thing that does happen once in a while, it depends on how well these were crimped. If you do dry fire your bow and these aren't crimped super good, they might actually go flying off and you'll actually see like a cut in your shrink tube and the knock point will be messing underneath. That's something to look at. And then Chris pointed out if your peep isn't tied in super good, it may move when you dry fire your bow. But if you have a good tie like this where it's wrapped around the center above and below, that's not likely to happen. But if you're not, if you're just like a soft knot all the way around the top. Probably ought to keep an eye on that. Make sure your peep's in the same position. So if you go back to 20 and all of a sudden you're hitting high, your peep probably moved up. But if you go through paper and it's clean, your cam's not met. So you should be safe. 
30 days out to tack. I think I'm gonna do one final change. We talked about in our What's On My Boat 2022 video, I've been shooting 60 pound mods, kind of sneakily because I wanted to get better form. I wanted to get better form and just practice good reps. But my sight tape ends right about now at 95 yards if I go top pin. So we're gonna try 70 pound mods, see if we can graduate me back to a little more draw weight, try to keep really good form, and uh, really just get some more sight tape, have some more holding weight, take down Josh. Take down Dan. Not my ass. Take down Jake. <laughs> take down everybody. You don't even need a bow press to do this, huh? No, these are super easy. So with a Matthews, once you get your bow set up, you can actually just swap and swap. It's swap super and swap. Simple. So so as the poundage is lighter, there's less pressure on the cable here. So when you take this screw out, it's going to try to move a little bit. So the only tricky part is when you go to put the other one in, you kind of have to pull the cable a little bit or push on the module a little bit. Go this way. Okay. So. If you don't, if you leave it not touching, you can't line up the screws. You have to pull it a little bit. Now the screws line up. So you gotta get your screw on your Allen here and then line it up and, and then pray one. you don't drop the screw when you're trying to put the screw back in. And this won't change the tune? No, unless you had too weak of an arrow, which you didn't. You had, if anything, too stiff of an arrow. If you were already borderline weak to begin with and then you go up 10 pounds, it will, but it doesn't change the wheel orientation and it doesn't change the knock travel of your bow. If you don't change the knock travel of your bow or the wheel orientation, the tune doesn't change. There's no reason for the rest to be somewhere else. Unless you shoot it through paper and you don't get a clean tear, then you need a stiffer arrow, but the rest should still be in the same spot and your string cable should still be in the same spot. And that's tuning. Tuning is the orientation of the rest and the string cable alignment. Nothing else. And how much uh, feet per second do you think we'll pick up? Uh, you'll probably pick up close to 20. Everything else being equal, because you're already shooting kind of a bit of a heavy arrow for 60 pounds. It's up properly spined because it's the same arrow you wanted to hunt with. So you're basically using a 70, 75 pound arrow here. So it's more weight than you really need. This will get you some velocity and it'll, honestly, it's more true to where it should tune anyway. So it's a little better all around as long as it's comfortable. If you're ever struggling to pull the weight or you're fighting it or you're really fatigued, you don't want to do it. But if you can pull it comfortably and it's not a struggle, go for it as far as I'm concerned. It wasn't a struggle, it was just like we reset to 60 just to kind of build from ground zero. Well, you went to a different release and you, you want to pull through the shot effectively. And if you go to a different release and you're shooting too much weight, you're never going to pull through the shot effectively. You're going to fight it like crazy. Basically, I'm doing this so I can shoot for the truck attack from 111. Yeah, what do we have to pay to do that? I think it's 10 bucks an arrow. 10 bucks an arrow? Yeah, how many arrows are you going to budget for that? Well, let's see. You have to hit the dot, right? And then you go in a raffle or something like yeah. that. How big is the dot? I don't know what it is. It's an orange dot out there. You got to hit it. That's got to be smaller than that. That's too easy to hit. I might have to bring a legit amount of money for that. Because <laughs> yeah. like, I, could, I could hit that. That's not hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see how it feels, big guy. Back to the big boy wheels. 70 pounds. All right, kids. You be the judge. Is Timmy pulling too much weight by this cycle? Let's see. Didn't look like a struggle to me. You're, you gotta keep your focus on that as well. You always have back pressure, don't relax. Which might sound contradictory, but you always want back pressure. Yeah, that looks clean. I wouldn't worry about that, that's plenty. And this is 80% let 80%, off. 80%, 70 pounds, uh, F mods, 80%. 80% gives you more holding weight. And when you're pulling through with a back tension and you're pointing at targets, the lower holding weight or the lower let off is actually more steady. It's just you can't hold it back as long, so that's why most people shoot a higher let off. Shoot it through the chrono, get these mm -hmm. people a number. Sure. Come on. Don't mind the mess. This would be the moment not to trip and fall. Is Jake Webb going to a target site before attack? I don't know if I'm allowed to disclose that. I so thought that was like top back. secret or something. Well, you can keep I just... your privacy if you need to. Well, it's, I... Four, three, two, one. I'm going to say 291. I'm going to say 285. We'll get you an arrow weight, but I think it's about 475. Yeah, it's not 291. There's no way. That's too heavy of an arrow for that. Am I good? Uh, a little higher there, Timmy. A little higher. Okay, somewhere there should be okay. 283. What'd you say? 285. <laughs> I thought you said 281. No, maybe. I don't know. It's 280 something. Let's go see how much that weighs. That sounds like a winning combo to me. 
What's that? Uh, that's that speed that them hunters like, they say. And they get intimidated by over 280. I'm not sure why, but some of them do. Something about how it's like harder to tune your broadheads or something or other. I've never had that problem. I've tuned them up to, believe it or not, not exaggerating. I built a bow with uh, 420 feet a second at one point and managed to get a broadhead tuned with a field point and a broadhead hitting in the same spot. That was a pretty extreme condition. It was more of a bet than anything. Ever really suggest hunting with that, but it is doable and it is functional. You just have to know what you're doing. But do you want us to build a Frankenstein bow? Um, you're not really going to steal speed there very well. It's hard. You can kind of take and make something more efficient at a given draw length, but you're not going to magically go faster. The only way to magically go faster is increase the poundage and decrease the arrow weight. 463.6. That's actually a really nice weight in my opinion. Although Ranch Ferry would totally <laughs> disagree with that. But yeah, that's a good setup. I mean, you've got maybe 15, 16% FOC, 463 grains. That'll pound, dude. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Nice, nice, nice. If Josh isn't there yet, he's almost at 20,000 subscribers. So let's go push him over the edge. Well, I've got an incredible surprise at 20,000, by the oh. way, but I'm going to wait till I got there. I thought up something the other day, and I've been talking to a couple different manufacturers about it, and I think I got a real big surprise for you guys at 20K. And view a lot more because it's going to help you in more ways than one. Well, that's a teaser. He's got me. He doesn't tell me this stuff, guys. No, I, I don't even get, now. I'm not even on the inside. So let's go head on over there. Head on over there.